I was woken about seven o'clock this morning by a text message from a friend telling me that a very large gang of men had just broken into their house and were in the process of evicting them. Um, so I grabbed my uh, camera and my phone and I headed down to see how I could help. Uh, I discovered basically there's a, a lot of people living in a, what was a long abandoned complex in Grange Gorman in Dublin, uh, about 27 people in all. And this morning, uh, bailiffs had angle grinded their way into the compound, uh, had started breaking into people's houses. And as you'll hear in this interview, uh, Gardy had uh, come alongside them and had broken into people's houses without a warrant, appeared to have taken uh, people's possessions. And when I left about uh, an hour ago, there was still resistance going on to the eviction they were attempting. As you'll also hear, uh, it appears this eviction is completely illegal. It appears they the uh, very sparse paperwork they have with them doesn't give them the powers to do this at all. So what we're witnessing this morning in Dublin is a very large group of 40 plus, mostly men, uh, evicting people from their homes uh, without proper legal paperwork and accompanied by a large squad of Garda who have been informed that this paperwork is invalid and who are still not only participating but have been threatening people with both pepper spray and batons. You'll find out more about this in the two interviews that follow. The little clip of music that opens it up um, was recorded a few months back when in the same place we had a, a sort of little memorial gathering for a friend of ours, Niall Harnett, uh, who was very involved in the Rossport campaign and um, a load of people who've been involved in that campaign gathered around a bonfire in this complex to remember him and one of those people sung a bit of song that I recorded at the time and it just happens accidentally this morning I actually recorded these interviews on top of the song but I think it also gives an impression, a good impression of what sort of space we're talking about. I would also say that the people I know there have also been very involved in the water charges campaign and in particular in implement or uh, resisting the imposition of water meters in the Stony Batter, Batter area in the run up to Christmas and in the new year, uh, they're definitely people well worth supporting. But now the interviews. It's one law for the multinational and another for the rest of the land. Um, okay, so you woke up at what seven o'clock this morning to the sound of it was people breaking heaven. in. It was like I said quarter quarter to seven or ten to seven and I heard banging and I like I was half asleep and I just didn't know what was happening and then somebody from the other room just shouted out there's work for us, they're breaking in, they're angle grinding the gate. And, like we went down and it's all kind of it's all it's pretty hazy. Um there was like loads of there was loads of police there and then these two guards came in <coughs> to the house and I said, you can't come in because you don't have a search warrant, it's illegal and you're trespassing. And, uh, there might have been four guards actually, I definitely can identify two of them. And they, um, <coughs> I said, it's illegal, you're trespassing, and they said, we have a search warrant. And I was like, show me your search warrant, show me your search warrant. And they, they were like, talk to our sergeant, we have a search warrant. And I was like, I don't believe you have a search warrant, you can't enter without sh showing the occupiers of the house a search warrant. And then the cops, um, they threw, they just threw me on the ground and then I was like shouting at them being like you're assaulting me, you're assaulting me and they were like dragging me around and then like I wouldn't let them up the stairs and they were like pushing me out the way being like what are you hiding, what are you hiding and I had a, I had a bag in here um, w like with my wallet and stuff in it I, um, yeah and I had a bag in, in here and I'd like I'd had it before the cops came in because I put my phone in there and I was looking for it and there's nowhere it could have gone. This is a small room and I had my ID and wallet in it and the bag's gone missing and I don't know where it could have gone and the only people who was in here was the cops and there's n I've looked over the whole house so I think they grabbed my bag. Um, what will I tell? Will I talk about? Well, outside? well, just, let's give people a bit of context. I mean, basically, this is your home. You've been living here for several months. You've also so done year, lots of almost a year. I put it like. I invested so much money into it and love and time and I live here with my fucking, my dog, like, and like, there's like 27 people who live here and call this place home and more people use it as like, as space. Yeah, so, I mean, if we ignore the uniforms for the moment, your experience was being woken up 
before 7 a.m. AM by a gang of men breaking into your house mm -hmm. who then pushed you around, ransacked the place and some of your stuff is missing and you uh -huh. don't know where it's gone. Yeah, um, I'm covered in bruises, like... Yeah, and you, I mean, so people can't see you, but you're obviously really shook up as well by this whole experience. I've been whole crying experience. and stuff, and they don't care if they think it's funny. Um, okay, so, I mean, just a few minutes ago, there was, uh, they, they started shoving fences into people outside and were trying to push people around. It also, from what I could understand, it turns out that the documents they have don't even cover this house. Uh, not even the, the road, not even the road. Yeah, and, the, and the, the guards who are present have been told that, and you could see on their faces they were obviously going, oh, fuck, but they're still engaged. I mean, I saw one of them pull out pepper spray. He didn't spray anybody as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the guy who's in charge down there. Uh, but, I mean, their, their response to this is complete aggression. So they we're facing kind of this mob of, of 40 security and guards outside who are just showing people around uh, and attacking, you know, essentially people who are just living, as, living in their houses. The sergeant has no, the, the, some of the cops are really young and the sergeant has no control over them. They are like doing whatever they want. They're like being actually like scarily violent. I feel like, I feel intimidated and the sergeant is pretending like he's seen people assault people he's not ordering people to assault but he's seen them he's seen them and he's not fucking he's not pulling them up on the fact that like i'm four foot nine like i shouldn't be handled i shouldn't be like two big men shouldn't be throwing me to the ground or like anything like that and the sergeant is just pretending to be a nice person and, and like no assaults are taking place but i'm covered in bruises Lose, like people are ble like caught up and bleeding um, out there we like they're trying to build a fence and we like blocked it like we're holding on to the fence and um, <laughs> and there's like security workers there as well and there's security workers were grabbing on, I was holding on to the fence and they were grabbing onto my hands and I like like pulling my hands against the wire so like like my hands are in ribbons now and they were trying to shove us between these two fences there was about 10 cops shoving us between these two fences like I'm like I thought my friend who was standing beside me was going to actually end up in a hospital because it was so sketchy and so dangerous and the sergeant asked us why we were pushing even though we were just pushing back and defending ourselves and yeah I, I was I was above looking out a window above you when that was happening and effectively you were being crushed between two fences they yeah. were all pushing one fence into you and, and there was the like ten of, them, yeah. 10 of them like mostly men against like some like skinny squatters <laughs> like <laughs> um I don't know what else to say. Yeah, no, that, that, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That gives us a good picture of what's happening here. Uh, okay, so uh, you, you have a bit of uh, background legal knowledge about this sort of setup. Can yeah. you tell me what your impressions are of what's happening outside? Um, well, I've, I've never really seen anything like this. Um, the, so they, they've come, well, like, before they even showed anyone any papers, you know, they just, they just broke in uh, through the gate. And, I mean, I wasn't here at the start of it, but, you know, by the time I got here, it was maybe like, at least 15 cops, probably like 20, maybe more private security, another 15 workers or so, like, um, and they were already inside, um, uh, and they've kind of built makeshift fences kind of around the place to stop people getting in. But um, I eventually, like, I, I, I talked to the cops and they said there's, there's some sort of, like, paperwork, something to do with court or something, so I was like, all right, like, maybe... Um, this is legal or something, but uh, uh, I looked at the court paperwork and, and it, it, it's no court paperwork. All, all, it, all, all the, the paper they have us is just a letter saying basically like, you're not supposed to be here, please fuck off, and a um, a map of the property and a sort of a, a deed of appointment, which is is a, a court paper, but it, it that that was the original deed of appointment from three years ago when the receivership company. Uh, well, when now was appointed um, uh, over the the, the the buildings and the receivership company um, Ernst and Young was appointed, uh, but like there's there's no there's no ejectment order there's no actual like for for, for them to to kick us out like to 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 um, be able to do that they need either they can get an injunction which is like possibly. Um, or they can get an ejectment order. An ejectment order is a standard way to do it. And you know, for for injectment, for them to get an ejectment order, like we would at least need to get a summons first, so that we could go to court and we have a chance to, to argue against it. But 
Um, they did, did they, like they came here with these pieces of papers saying, oh look, there's a piece of paper, so that means we did hardly do this. But the piece of paper has, has no, it's not an ejectment order, it's not an injunction, it, 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 it's, it's not anything issued by a court. It, it, it's, it's nothing like that. It's just, it's just, um, they just came and broke in and, and like, you know, you, you, you try to argue with the cops about it and they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't, I don't know that much about civil law, so, uh, I don't know, I'm just doing my job, blah, 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 you know, and there's... So, I mean, long story short with that, really then what's happening outside is we have a gang of about 40, mostly men, there's a couple of women there as well, who are attempting to throw people out of what essentially their homes yeah. using physical force. Uh, they don't really have anything that's a reasonable legal basis for that whatsoever. For, as, as far as I understood what you just told me, yeah. uh, we have uh, eight to ten Garda assisting them in that. And I saw and heard the Garda had been informed that the, the paperwork was not legal. They seem to have acknowledged that in some form to you. Uh, I also hear one of, one of the guards asking if he, he said, well, if you can show me the deed of the house. I mean, if people, I, I own my own house. If, you know, a gang of men broke into my house at 7 o'clock exactly. in the morning, I don't even have the deed. The bank has the deed. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't show them the deed. Yeah. You know, so, exactly. I'm, this yeah. Is, so it's basically an eviction through sheer thuggery. It's yeah. physical force is what, yeah. is what they're, they're trying to evict people by. And the, importantly in this, the Garda are supporting yeah. a private company in that operation after they have yeah. been informed and after they clearly understood what I, they've been informed I mean, about. you said eight or ten. There's eight or ten uniformed Garda, but there, there, there's plenty of plainclothes Garda as well. Um, uh, there's, some of them have left now, but they were much more earlier. Um, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's exactly right, what you've said. Okay, thank you, thank you. Sergeant David, wrong address. Sergeant David, wrong address.